Okay, what I, what I want to do now is um, prove mathematical theorems, okay? And it's, it's something that really takes time to get used to, and for various reasons. Sometimes it looks too hard, sometimes it looks too easy, and the question is, what? What do we need to prove this for? It's obvious, okay? So mathematics is constructed as you define something, you can define whatever you want, Usually the definition is meaningful if you have examples. If you show that what you defined is not just something in your mind, but there really are things that are examples of that definition, like a field. So a field is a very complicated definition. Here it is. I left it here on the board. But we saw examples of fields. We saw that the real numbers are a field. We mentioned that we're going to see that the complex numbers are a field. The rational numbers are a field. So there are fields. Okay, it's something worth defining. And what I want to show now, that fields satisfy more properties that are not listed in the axioms, and therefore we have to prove them. So here, here it goes. Let's just get started. So this is a theorem. Very basic theorem, but nevertheless our first theorem. Let F be a field. Suppose we have a field. Then, so I'm going to list a few properties that necessarily hold. I'm going to prove several of them. I'm going to leave the rest for you to try and, and, and struggle with this homework. For some of you it's going to be very easy just mimicking the proofs we did. Others are going to feel a bit more challenged, but come and ask. Come, come and uh, get help if you need it. And then I'm going to even ask you, try to find more properties. Try to think of properties you know from the real numbers and see if you can prove them as general properties of this abstract notion of a field. So here are the properties I want to list. One, um, zero is unique. In a field, there can't be more than one element satisfying the role of zero, namely that when you add uh, uh, any number to it, it stays invariant. A plus zero is A. There can only be one zero. And in fact, one is unique as well. There's a unique additive, ide uh, additive identity and a unique multiplicative identity. Two, another property, uh, minus a is unique. Any element can only have one additive inverse, and a to the minus one is unique. Any element can only have one multiplicative inverse. That's not obvious. It's not written in the axioms. We know that, right? We know that if you take 7, that the multiplicative inverse is 1 seventh. And it's only that. There can't be others, right? The number that when you multiply by it, you get 1. But how do you prove it from the axioms? Number 3, uh, a times 0 is always zero. That's what we mentioned, that we mentioned this before, but now I'm going to prove it. Number four, um, for any a and b in f, if a times b is zero, if you take two numbers and multiply them and get zero, then either a is zero or b is zero. Okay, so th this, th th this statement is called that there are no zero divisors. There are no two numbers that you can multiply and get, um, and get zero unless one of them is already zero. Okay, and we will learn even in this course different kinds of multiplications for which there are zero divisors. You can take two things, multiply them, and get zero where none of these original things were zero, but it's not going to be in structures which are fields. In a field, there are no zeros divisors. Let me mention this. In a field, no zero divisors. That's the name of this property. And one last one that I, or two more, sorry, five. Oh, I can already see I was too large with the font. Uh, negative 1, the additive inverse 
of the multiplicative identity times a is minus a. You can prove it. And the last one I want to mention is this cancellation property. So if a plus b equals a plus c, if a plus b equals a plus c, then what can you say if a plus b equals a plus c? Exactly, b equals c. And likewise for multiplication, if a times b equals a times c, then b equals c. So you can cancel with respect to addition or cancel with respect to multiplication. Here we have to mention that for the multiplication that this holds only where a is not zero. If a is uh, zero, then b, can, b and c can be different. If we multiply both by zero, we still get zero equals zero. Okay, so let's start proving some of these just to, to, to give you the flavor, just to give you the flavor of how we work with the abstract uh, definition. So some proofs, some proofs, I'm not going to do all of them, it takes time and it, it, it becomes redundant. The idea is just start repeating themselves and you can really practice a few on your own to, to, to feel comfortable with them. So some proofs, um, so let's prove number one uh, that uh, zero is unique. I want to prove that zero is unique. So how do I prove it? Suppose there are uh, there are two uh, zero elements. Two elements that satisfy the role of zero, that a plus zero equals a. So let's denote them by zero for one, and I can't call both of them zero because they're different. Let's call the other one, zero with a little hat, okay? Two elements that are the zero element, that play the same role. Let's add them. What is zero hat plus zero? On the one hand, on the one hand, remember what the role of zero is. When you add it to anything, you just get what you started with. A plus zero is A. So this equals zero hat. That's because zero is a zero element. This is because of property uh, three. Axiom three says that zero, since zero is a zero element, when you add it, you do nothing. Do you agree? On the other hand, this equals zero plus zero hat. Why does it equal zero plus zero hat? Right, because of property number five. It's commutative. Addition is commutative in a field, so if there are two elements, you can add them either way. And now, using number three again, but not for zero, but rather for zero hat, a plus zero hat is a, because zero hat is a zero element. So just using the axioms, I ended up with showing that zero hat and zero are equal. They were the same thing to start with. Zero is unique. Good? Clear? So I, I, I really believe that some of you feel that it's not that this was too complicated, it was that this was too easy. How, how do we... Whoa! Practice, right? You have, well, we'll see a few more and you gradually get the idea of how to start with axioms, prove theorems. Once we proved it, that's it. We can use it from here on forever. Zero in a field is unique. We proved it. It's not an axiom, but we proved it. So from now on, it's a fact. Okay, let's prove another one. For example, let's prove, let's prove um, number three. Number three said that a times zero equals zero. So let's prove number three. So this is, th this is the, the, the axiom numbers. Axiom three, axiom five, axiom three. And this is, the, this is the, the numbers from the statements of the theorem. 
So let's prove number three. Number three said that a times zero equals zero. Okay, it's not one of the axioms. It's the claim that when I take the additive, sorry, the additive identity and multiply it by a number, I get zero again. So let's prove it. So proof. What is a times zero? A times zero, I can write it as a times zero plus zero. Because zero and zero plus zero are the same, because zero plus zero is zero, this is axiom number three. Do you agree? Good? Right, it's a good question. How would you know to start like that? You don't. You start fiddling around with things and seeing what leads you somewhere and what doesn't. Okay. Now let's use the 11th axiom, distributivity. This equals a times 0 plus a times 0. I use the distributive property for this. Okay. Now, by axiom number 4, axiom number 4 said that there is a minus 8. There's an additive inverse for every number. So by 4, by axiom 4, there exists a minus a such that, uh, sorry, I don't want to, uh, there exists a minus a that's true, but what I want to use is the inverse of this number. a times 0 is a number, it has an additive inverse. Every number has an additive inverse. So there exists a minus a times 0, such that, what does it satisfy? a times 0 plus minus a times 0 equals 0. Wow, this looks like complete nonsense, right? But that's a very valid statement from the axioms. This is a number. It has an additive inverse. We denote the additive inverses by minus the number. And what it means to be an additive inverse is if we take the number, add to it its inverse, we get 0. Do you agree? OK. Therefore, 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 I'm going to continue on the next board. Therefore, a times 0 plus minus a times 0 plus the inverse equals, now remember that we proved that a times 0 equals a times 0 plus a times 0. Let's just for a second peek at the previous board. That was this line. a times 0, I can replace it by a times 0 plus a times 0. That's what I'm going to do. So this equals a times 0 plus a times 0, replacing a times 0 with this, plus the inverse, just copying it here. So this is because of what we proved in the previous line. Okay, so I replaced this with this. Now I'm going to use associativity of addition. That was property number 2, axiom number 2. two? Axiom 2, I can rewrite this as a times 0 plus a times 0 plus minus a times 0. Instead of adding these two and then this, I added these two and then this. Okay? And now, what is this equal? This equals 0, right? It's a times 0 plus minus a times 0. This is a number plus its inverse. So this just equals what we added it to. Okay, so let's write maybe a times 0 plus 0, which is just a times 0. Okay, if you're feeling, what is he doing? What is all this nonsense? There's a bit of nonsense when you're working with abstract things. Okay, it's not just looking and saying, yep, it's true. 5 times 0 is 0, that's an... Okay, so what did we prove? We just proved, looking at both ends, that a times 0 plus its inverse equals this, equals a times 0. But on the other hand, a times 0 plus 
minus a times zero, this equals zero to start with. It's a number plus its inverse. So if you look at both ends, we just showed that a times zero is zero. Here's a new, a new symbol. It follows that, or it applies that. a times zero equals zero. That's the proof. Okay? So, maybe I'll quickly do another one, really quickly. Um, let's prove four. Four was the statement that there are no zero divisors. Okay? So, suppose a times b equals zero. I want to show that either a is zero or b is zero. Okay? Um, if a is zero, then we're done. Right? I wanted to show that one of them is zero. If a is zero, we're done. If it's not zero, if a is not zero, let's show that b has to be zero. So if a is zero, we're done. If a is not zero, then there exists an a inverse. Every non-zero element has an inverse, which we denoted by a to the minus one, a multiplicative inverse. Therefore, and now you're going to label the axioms that I'm using. What is a minus one times a times b? a minus one, which exists, times a times b. On the one hand, it's a minus one times zero, because we're assuming a times b equals zero, and anything uh, times zero by the previous statement of this theorem is zero. That's from the previous statement. On the other hand, by associativity of multiplication, this equals a minus one times a times b. But a minus one times a is one, that's what the multiplicative inverse does. So it's 1 times b. And 1 times anything is just the anything. And again, if you look at both ends, if a is not 0, it has an inverse. And therefore, this holds. Therefore, b is 0. OK? So either a is 0. And if it's not 0, b has to be 0. Good? OK? If you're feeling now that, that you're a bit scared of, wow, I would never know how to do something like this on my own, then never starts in a few minutes. Take property number two, for example. Show that minus a is unique. Try playing around with the axioms. You can always use something we already proved. That's completely legitimate. Like in this proof, I already used a previous statement. That's fine. And try showing that all these, property hold, all these properties hold. And in addition, in addition, try thinking of things you know hold in R and in Q. State them as theorems, abstract theorems, and try proving them. That's very good practice. OK? So that's the end of, of this one and the end of our preliminary discussion of fields.